Hi everybody, just having a little fun with the eclipse that is happening tomorrow. Reminds me of my teaching days. But first of all, question for you. For any location, probably in the world, uh, how many years on average would it be for you to see a total solar eclipse? What's the chance of in how many years would any location get to see a total solar eclipse on average? So it's about 400 years, a little bit less. So on average, like say Bethlehem, every 400 years would get to see a total solar eclipse. Could happen more, could happen less, that's an average. Tomorrow for us is a partial eclipse, but it's a little bit more than just partial. It's 92% covered, you know, so uh, it'll be good for us. It's don't think that anything's drastic gonna happen. It's not gonna get dark in the middle of the day. You're not gonna be able to see the planets all of a sudden in the sky. You will definitely notice some different things, you know. Um, where is the best place to go? Well, there are people probably flying right now to Mexico because what people do is they combine their vacations with a total solar eclipse. So some people have had this vacation plan for a year or more in advance. Um, happens to be a, a place in Mexico called Torreon. The eclipse, the total eclipse there is gonna last probably the longest for about four minutes and almost 30 seconds, 28 seconds to be exact. That's how long it's gonna last there. That's really, really, really good. Erie, Pennsylvania, I would love to hop in a car tomorrow drive out to Erie. I don't know, what is it, four or five hours? This is something on my bucket list, but I don't think I'm going to be doing it tomorrow. Just too much going on. But if you go to Erie, I know a lot of people that are going to Erie, Buffalo, New York, etc., etc. The total solar eclipse there should be about three minutes and 42 seconds, something like that. You're taking a chance if you go to Erie. You don't know. I mean, you could look at the weather forecasts, and it, no matter where you go, there's a chance that you could have clouds. There are cruise eclipses, which uh, cruise eclipse trips, which are really cool. So the the cruise ship will actually travel to the shadow band in the ocean, and if they see that there's bad weather at a certain place, they can obviously direct the ship to go to a different place to hit the cloud band in totality. Um, where? In the United States, can you see it? It it doesn't go across the country. It goes kind of from south to north, starting again down in Mexico, and then coming up to like the southwest part of Texas. It's going to be visible in the southern tip of Illinois, Indiana, Indianapolis, Michael Laporta Jr. I think you're around there. You might be able to see a total. Uh, and then it comes up and hits uh, Cleveland, Buffalo, Erie, and then New York, Upper New York, and then further north of that. So, yeah, the one in Erie is going to last about 3 minutes and 42 seconds. I think I said that. But um, here in Pennsylvania, it's going to start about 2.03 and peak around 3.32 ending uh, around 431. So best time to go out, you know, would be during peak. So if you're getting out of school or whatever's going on, you have your sunglasses, eclipse glasses, like I talked about before, take a look. I mean, if you could watch it from the beginning to the end, you don't have to watch the whole time. You could just glance up once in a while. You'll just start to see the moon just start to cover the sun a little bit and I'll slowly like kind of travel across the sun because you know astronomically it's really the moon that is coming in between the earth and the sun and the moon is blocking the sun this is a solar eclipse not a lunar eclipse uh, and then it projects a cloud band onto the United States and if you're in that totality cloud band that's the best place to be you know so Again, it's not going to be anything drastic. Don't stare at the sun without your eclipse glasses. A welder mask. Another way of doing it would be to use cardboard, pieces of cardboard with pinholes, and you can actually project the images onto a cardboard. You don't have to even worry about looking at the sun. 
You could Google it. They're very easy to make. And then I think the other thing I just want to discuss is there was an eclipse years ago. We had most of Freedom High School out for it. We sold eclipse glasses. Most of the school district went out for it. I remember these things. I remember it did get almost like it got cloudy, kind of like not dark, but definitely you could notice it got cloudy. It got windy, which was weird, just, you know, in the middle of the day. The temperature definitely dropped, you know, no doubt. You could almost feel like you had to put a jacket on. And then I remember in the front of Freedom High School, there used to be a balcony and there used to be some trees. I remember taking my students under the trees. And when we looked down at the ground, this was really cool. I'll never forget it. We looked down at the ground and you see these little eclipsed suns all over the ground. I don't even know if we had cell phones back then. I wish I had pictures of it or a video. That was really, really cool. And we weren't even in totality. So there's a lot more stuff that goes on during totality. If future could be a future video, things called Bailey's beads, the diamond ring effect, all these things I used to teach in my astronomy class. And then, you know, what not a better way to learn something like this than to safely go out and view it and you know, look up some information about it and something probably that you're never going to forget for the rest of your life. So let's pray for clear skies tomorrow. Hope you all get to see it. If you need a place to go, I'm having a little eclipse party. So we'll have a lot of food, beverages, eclipse glasses, everything we need to have a good time. So everybody here's to clear skies and have a great day.